This video will discuss Raoul's law for ideal solutions. So from our previous video, we mentioned that uh, PI is the partial vapor pressure of substance I in whatever our mixture is of various chemical components in a liquid solution. So PI star would be the vapor pressure of pure I in whatever solution we have. So the pure liquid would produce a vapor pressure of PI star and the mixture I produces a vapor pressure of PI. We're going to define the quantity chi I. So this is like an X with kind of squiggly ends on the uh, on this uh, bar connecting it. So that's the Greek letter chi. So chi sub I is what we call the mole fraction of I. So chi I equals the number of moles of I divided by the total number of moles or the number of moles of I divided by the sum of the number of moles of every component in the mixture. So we can tell here that um, we have the maximum value of chi can be when ni equals n, which would be 1, which is a pure, which would be a pure liquid or pure gas of substance i. The minimum value is where the number of moles of i is 0, so that would be a mole fraction of 0. So chi i of every substance must fall somewhere in between and the mole fraction of all components in this in the mixture is going to add up to 1. Okay, so what we're going to use in this video is called Raoul's law and that tells us that the vapor pressure of a substance in a solution is equal to its mole fraction times the vapor pressure of pure liquid I and this is true if the solution is ideal. So now this is going to start to be a little bit of circular logic for the moment because ideal solutions are defined to be solutions which obey Raoul's law for all components at all mole fractions. So if you have a solution of various components and every single component in the reaction mixture obeys Raoul's law at every single value of mole fraction for every single component, then your solution is said to be ideal just as a gas is said to be ideal if it obeys the ideal gas law. Okay, so when do solutions behave ideally? So this is an approximation, of course, so it's true, it's true under certain conditions, and it's more likely to be true the more closely these guidelines are followed. So it's going to be true if all components in the solution have similar size and shape, so if all the molecules are of similar size, molecular weight, they're of approximately the same, you know, topology. If they're, for example, hexane and pentane are likely to have uh, nearly ideal solutions mixing together, whereas something like um, benzene and water are not. Um, if the interactions among and between all components are the same. So if the interactions between two molecules of of substance A are very similar to the interactions between substance A and substance B, then you're much more likely to have an ideal solution. So the example I mentioned, uh, hexane and pentane, uh, two hexanes are likely to interact very similar with one another as are a hexane and a pentane molecule. So that solution is very likely to be ideal, whereas something like uh, hexane and water uh, well, those two interact very differently with one another, so they're, they're very unlikely to be an ideal solution. Okay, so we have this uh, plot that we can draw here. So we start uh, looking at the mole fraction of component 1. Let's imagine we have two components. So we have component 1, whose pure liquid has a vapor pressure of P1 star. Component 2, which has a vapor pressure of P2 star. So starting at a mole fraction of, of for component 1 of 0, which will be a pure solution of component 2, up to a mole fraction of component 1 of 1, which will be a pure solution of component 1. So if this solution obeys Raoul's law, then the total pressure, which is a sum of uh, pressure 1 and pressure 2, the, pressure, the vapor pressure of each component, if that follows this linear line, connecting us all the way from a mole fraction of 0 to 1, then it is said to be an ideal solution. And that'll be um, the vapor pressure of component 1 starts at 0 and increases linearly up to P1 star as 
chi i, chi 1 goes from 0 to 1. And p2 starts at p2 star all the way down to 0 as chi 1 goes from 0 to 1, or chi 2 goes from 1 to 0. Okay, so from, from the previous video on the chemical potential of solutions, we have the chemical potential of component I in solution is the chemical potential of pure liquid I plus RT times the natural log of the vapor pressure of component I divided by the vapor pressure of pure liquid I. So if a solution is ideal, the quantity PI over PI star, well, we get PI from Raoult's law, which is chi I times PI star. So this is chi i times pi star divided by pi star, which cancels out on the numerator and denominator. So this ratio is chi i, it's the mole fraction of component i. So for an ideal solution, we have that the chemical potential of component i in solution is equal to the chemical potential of pure component, of pure component i as a liquid, plus rt times the natural log of the mole fraction of i. And so this says that for a binary mixture, if one component behaves ideally at all mole fractions, then the other component will as well. And chi 2, whenever there are two components, as they must both sum up to 1, chi 2 is going to equal 1 minus chi 1. So if we want to, if we want to know what the total pressure of the system is, the total vapor pressure from Dalton's law of partial pressures, that's P1 plus P2, and that is equal to chi 1 times p1 star plus chi 2 times p2 star, both from Raoult's law, which is equal to, if we substitute in for chi 2 equals 1 minus chi 1, the equation we get is that versus the mole fraction of component 1, as I have graphed in green, the total pressure equals p2 star plus chi 1 times p2 star minus p1 star which is just a linear increase from P2 star up to P1 star whenever we are changing our mole fraction from 0 up to 1 for component 1.